for that. Yeah, and we just saw that av the average accumulation for energy, the 120 versus like 50 on average. Why was this year so bad? So there are a couple factors. One of the largest factors is that we're no longer in the so-called super El Nino hangover. Two years ago, we had a very strong El Nino. And what that does is that increases vertical wind shear, which can rip apart or prevent tropical for systems. Vertical wind shear, for those of us who don't set immunology, so what does the, that mean? <laughs> that means when, when there's uh, winds blowing different directions in different levels of the atmosphere. These tropical systems are very delicate. And it's very possible when the winds are too strong for them to just simply get ripped apart or for them to be unable to form when the winds are blowing too strongly in different directions in the atmosphere. El Ninos across the Pacific tend to increase that vertical wind shear in the Atlantic Ocean. And so this year we're seeing actually weak La Nina conditions. We've seen uh, sea surface temperatures in the Central Pacific really cool off. Mm -hmm. And what that's allowed is much more conducive conditions across a lot of the Pacific Ocean for these tropical systems, the likes of which we haven't seen for a few years now. Uh, David, in the market, the story is a relief rally today. Uh, what's the strength of the relief rally so far? How do you measure that? Today's uh, market action is going to be really important for that. So I, I think the first thing that it's important to do is to not confuse human tragedy with economic impact, right? We need to separate the two mm -hmm. and think about them uh, in isolation. That said, I mean, I think there are going to be some clear winners and losers from what's happened over the past couple of weeks here. Our expectation is things like airlines, insurers could take a hit, whereas, you know, autos, sectors like that, they're going to be engaged in the rebuild, rebuilding could actually do okay. So, you know, in, in aggregate, uh, tropical storms tend to have a minimal impact on the market, but beneath the surface at the industry and sub-industry level, we often do see a bit of divergence in, uh, in performance. And the market in Europe certainly fed in this risk. If you look at the insurers this morning, the big outperformance in Europe coming from there. I would say going forward though, David, how are we meant to think about this in the context of what the Federal Reserve will do and how they'll interpret the data in the coming months? So I, I think the Fed is still very focused on the inflation data. I think when it comes to a rate hike later this year, that's really going to be their guide. Uh, that said, you know, things like this, these idiosyncratic risks, they do pop up from time to time. Uh, I liken it back to 2015 and 2016. You know, the, the Fed wasn't expecting a slowdown in the global economy. Obviously, that's a bit different than a hurricane hitting Texas or, you know, the tropical storm in, uh, in Florida. But we need to be prepared for any economic impacts this could have. And if it does feed through to the inflation data, you know, I think it could, in fact, delay their action later this year.